Hi everybody, my name is Eldad Rudik and I'm the Director of Engineering at Stackpools and I'm here with Orly Melech, our SRE lead and today we are going to discuss Puerta, which is a gating service that we created for our Kubernetes native continuous delivery. What we are going to discuss today, first we'll start with a quick introduction to Stackpools after that we will discuss a little bit more about our delivery pipeline and we will dig into later about our custom gates uh, we will explain how they created and how they support our culture. And after that, we will describe Puerta, which is the service that handles those gates and support our pipeline. Okay, so about Stackpools. So Stackpools is a fairly new startup that creates, uh, we create a SaaS platform for SREs and for reliability in general. We call that reliability as code. We digest many events coming from monitoring systems and we enable SREs to automatically respond to those events by executing an automation that we call Playbooks. Playbook help investigate and remediate events and resolve incidents automatically without any manual intervention and therefore reaching a faster resolution, a safer resolution and a quicker respond. A bit about our tech stack. At Stackpools, we leverage Google Cloud Platform as our cloud provider and we heavily relied on Kubernetes uh, to deploy our services. Particularly, we use uh, GKE, which is the managed solution in uh, GCP. We strongly believe in immutable infrastructure. So we have Terraform code that describes all our infrastructure as code. Uh, and probably, as you guessed, we are uh, cloud native architecture. We have microservices and we have modern RPC uh, in the communication between those microservices. And as the, as the context of this talk, we have a full CI CD from a marriage to the main branch up to production automatically without any human intervention in between. And that's the, that's the context of this talk. And we'll dig a little bit about that in the next slides. Okay, so with that, I let Or explain and discuss our pipeline. Thank you, Rudik. I'm Or, the SRE lead at Secpos, and I'll take it from here. Let's talk about the CD pipeline at Stackpulse. We use fairly common infrastructure. We use GitHub as our hosting for code repositories and CircleCI for the CI pipelines. We are using with Lego uh, bricks with Flux and Flugger and Circle and connecting all of it together with Puerta, which I'll discuss in a bit. For the CI part, we have uh, GitHub, which kicks a Circle CI job for each commit. Then the Circle CI, a successful job, ends up with Docker and OCI image pushed to a registry. In the CD part, we have Flux, which is, for those who don't know, Flux is a GitHub toolkit, which listens to two resources. Uh, one of them is Git for configuration. The other is container registry, in our case, Google container uh, registry for new artifacts and images. We push the image to the registry. Flux then refreshes its cache, discovers the image, applies it to the new canary. Flagger then recognizes that and triggers a new canary pipeline. The way we extend Flagger is through uh, webhooks. As you see listed here, all the webhook stages that Flagger supports, and we leverage and implement those in Puerta. The cu custom gates are implemented in Puerta, like I said, and this is how we extend Flagger and support internal tooling and the organizational culture and structure we use. Let's discuss deeper. So what happens to a commit. Each PR get merged to the main branch. Then a CI system triggers a build on staging on the main branch. Flux then updates the workload for the Canary. Flagger triggers a new Canary pipeline. Then we have a pre-rollout triggers our E2E and waits for the E2E job to finish. During rollout, we use the built-in metrics for Flagger, it queries uh, our Prometheus monitoring system for success rate and latency. We fine tune each uh, canary metrics depending on the on its SLOs, and if uh, we stray away from the success rate and 
latency we set to reach in our service, we fail the rollout and roll back the canary deployments and shift all the traffic back to the primary. We then have a post rollout. On a successful rollout on Flagger, we implement the post rollout webhook, which creates a new release on GitHub. And then all the things happens again the same way uh, on prod. So a new CI uh, build triggers on the new release. Fluxity then updates the workload on production. Flagger triggers a new Canary pipeline on production and again and again. So why do we need custom gates? Let's discuss. We want to deliver a value for our customers since we are a new startup and we want to impact customers as fast and uh, as reliably as we can. The way we do this is with gating, we make developers feel comfortable with, with pushing all day, every day and uh, relying on a gating service to gate and fence their failures and uh, mitigate bad releases from reaching production. We want to support our organizational culture. We strongly believe in great engineering culture throughout our organization. The CD is not an exception for this. Well, we want to have everything support our, our organizational culture. And we do this uh, with gating only E2E tested flows, uh, which the E2E are tested by the point of view of the user, which means we can catch bugs that developers may miss during a unit test and integration test, and we might catch those in the gating and then uh, prevent from those to uh, reach production. Visibility is a crucial part of pipeline. Developers want to know what's, uh, what's the state and phase of their deployment and where it stands. Is it in prod yet or not? Can I check? Can I reach the code on prod? Can I test it? Can I check that everything that I tested in dev is actually working as expected or not? We strongly believe in full ownership of developers from dev to production. Uh, you build it, you run it, you are the owner of the commit, you will make sure it reaches staging, it behaves correctly, you test it, you write the E2E test, you write the integration and unit test, and make sure everything reaches in a safe manner to uh, production. Uh, another benefit of having a gate is we can gather all the events happening in Flagger and keep an audit uh, trail in logs and store them for a longer time. Plus having them in a, a central uh, channel, we can follow when and where was a release and we can uh, use it for uh, compliance reasons. So uh, let's talk about the gates a bit. We have a, a confirm rollout webhook implemented in Puerta. We strongly believe in reliability since we are a reliability platform and what we want from developers is actually work when they feel comfortable remotely or in the office or at night where, where they reach uh, peak performance. We don't want to block them from merging their code when it's ready. We believe in small code changes and PRs and merging constantly the PRs is crucial part. The thing is everything is automated so we don't want someone uh, merging at midnight uh, their commit to uh, reach prod. So we actually gate them from reaching production in hours people cannot attend the code reaching production. Uh, without waking up the on-caller and stuff, we are making sure the rollout happens during uh, work hours. We have 12 hours during the day that everyone can attend and uh, actually answer, answer on call regarding bad deployments. So it's actually guarding uh, developers from having uh, mistakes without intention at night. And we keep the code chunks smaller and much more reliable and easier to read instead of having chunk of uh, a big chunk of code reaching production in every time of the day. So uh, we use the confirm uh, rollout webhook to simulate uh, release trains 
and we are queuing the releases from reaching production to a certain, a certain uh, hours. Here is an example. So the canary is waiting. This is Friday. It's, it's weekend here in Israel. People don't want to wake up from a release happening during the weekend. And this release will queue up until Sunday morning and will let hard devs uh, have their weekend with their families, etc. So the next gate is the ETU execution. We use the pre rollout uh, webhook to trigger a CI job uh, on each newly deployed canary. If the, if the job fails, we fail the entire canary without actually impacting prod. The pre-rollout prevents traffic from getting to the new canary and it stops before even propagating a single percent of traffic. We use a, a playwright, which is an e infrastructure for UI tests and our entire APIs are gRPC based. So we uh, enjoy uh, the fact that uh, we get generated clients for each uh, API and we leverage these generated clients in the E2E to trigger both UI and API tests along the same job. This one helps us uh, simulate a, a user accessing our systems from the CLI, the API, or the uh, UI, and helps us catch bugs which we couldn't find or catch beforehand. And this adds another layer of protection and makes developers feel much comfortable when pushing code. Next gate is crucial. It seems uh, trivial to have stack notifications for each uh, phase, but what we had at first is using we use the, the built-in uh, notifications from Flagger, which are lacking. They're not that verbose. So we added an event webhook in Puerta, which, will, uh, which took every event verbosely and pushed it to a central, a central channel. What we then realized is developers were complaining about the noise in the central channel. They have very verbose mess messages about all the microservices we deploy at Stackpulse for dev and staging and everything was concentrated into the same channel. We then decided to actually keep the channel and copy the messages in order to be able to audit and transparency in the organization and let everyone know what happened when so we can correlate between incidents and deployments. But we wanted the developer to know where they stand in which phase their code and commit is at and know where exactly they stand and whether their code reached production or staging and whether it failed. And then if it failed, we uh, they can go back and probably fix it and know what, why it failed, maybe 500, maybe something in the, in the server, maybe something in the E2E broke it and they broke the contract and they go and fix it. The feedback loop is much uh, uh, shorter and the DM is more curated at the developer and helps uh, the developer identify bugs and stuff earlier in the pipeline. So I'll give it back to Rudik. I think uh, we're done. If everyone wanna, wanna know another, they have questions regarding Flagger and uh, Puerta, they can reach me. So let's sum up. At Stackpools, we create a SaaS platform for SREs and for reliability in general. We relied heavily on our continuous deployment pipeline to do that safely and to deliver fast uh, value for our customers. To do that, we use Flagger, which is very common solution in that field, but we had to extend the built-in functionality of Flagger using a custom tool that we created, which is which we call Puerta. And Puerta has custom gates that support our own needs and our own organizational culture. As Thor mentioned, we have E2E there and we have uh, notifications there and many other things. And that's what helps us to achieve that fast value and fast and safe a feedback loop, uh, so it helps us a lot to extend that functionality and get a state-of-the-art continuous deployment pipeline. Thank you so much for watching our session on Puerta, a gating service for Kubernetes native CD. Please feel free to reach out on Twitter and ask us additional questions. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks.